key of time or 10 or 8 p.m. London time. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Hello, my dear friends, best greetings from Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Dr. Viktor Fursov. I'm a research entomologist, the keeper and teacher. And today this is my stream. This is online discussion with you, my viewers. And then it will be just recorded and uploaded to the channel. And you can watch it later because today we will be talking on our camera and telephone and camera just online. I will show different insects. And first of all, I would like to say, I would like to, put, uh, to invite different people for discussion for the future streams, probably on this weekend. Weekend can be a little bit free. And if, if there will be no problem about some attacks from our neighbors, who is always making some troubles for, for us. So we will have discussion and meeting on this weekend, also on half past 10 Kiev time or half past eight London time. Yes, because I want to ask, for example, some questions which can be interesting for you or are not interesting for you. So I can discuss it in my future shows, in my future streams on this weekend, because I will, I'm planning new <clears throat> stream on this Sunday, on this Sunday, 8 p.m. Not 8 p.m. <clears throat> 18, not 18. 6 p.m. Kiev time or 4 p.m. London time with my friend who is Toastmasters and we can discuss some questions about life, life and people and everything in the world in Ukraine, in Kiev, Ukraine and in Oxford, London. So that's why from my point of view, I'm prepared some questions, for example, pre preliminary, which can be interesting for discussion, or maybe interesting for foreigners, maybe for Ukrainian people. For instance, what unused in a Kiev city? What unused in Ukraine? Is it interesting for you? What Ukrainian people do think about the war of Russian Federation in Ukraine against Ukraine, actually? How do Ukrainian people work and live now in Kiev? Because I in Kyiv myself and can tell about it a little bit more. How Ukrainian people are living near the front line of war in Ukraine now in 2023. I can tell only from news and internet about it. What do foreigners want to know about Ukraine now? What do you want if you're a foreigner want to know about Ukraine now? Can you tell me about it? So some questions I can discuss also in other streams. For instance, some questions. How can you support and help to Ukraine now? Or maybe about science, about science. What are you using the world science and Ukrainian science? I'm planning to participate to visit Natural History Museum of Ukraine in Kiev on this Saturday, <clears throat> where we'll be planning my colleague, who is scientist, botanist, he's and Alexei Kovalenko, he's planning his meeting about presentation of his new book about mushrooms, mushrooms and fa different fungi and world of plants, fungi and mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So he will be talking about some news in a fungi and plants world. So maybe you are interested in some news in Ukrainian science. So I hope to record it and we'll present it as well. What are, are you interested to know what are news in the world science of entomology and zoology? Is it interesting for you? I can make some, some kind of review. What are news in the nature conservation on in our planet? What questions are really interesting for you in 2023 now about the world, about Ukraine? So write about it in comments, and I will be trying to discuss these questions together in my new streams. But now we're turning back to insects. So I am pleased to present some new videos and some pre-recorded videos from my archive. 
and this video is my clip who recorded it in home at home he is keeping the culture of ants in his formicarium 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 this is a special terrarium formicarium for ants so he is keeping it and he is observing it and so you see here this is big ant and this is a queen queen sitting inside the tube laying tiny small eggs the start of all in formicarium starts from the egg laying from oviposition of queen and after that the oviposition larvae are coming larvae are growing queen is feeding them just some workers imaging and this is a cell inside this formicarium yes here is this big one in the center this is a queen queen and there are some different big workers middle sized workers some small sized workers and a big soldier on the left corner big soldier also worker and also are some inside this cell so this is part of a colony part of a colony because there are several such holes such cavities in formicarium artificial nest for for this species Messer probably Messer ponticus and this as I said the biggest ant here this is a queen queen very reproductive female which are laying which is lay who is laying eggs and producing this new generation and enlarging the generation of ants in this artificial nest are you ants in your at home are you interested in ants if you have ants if you have recorded some videos but you don't have youtube channel so you can send small streams small files like several megabytes we can exchange by these files and i can show your original videos on my channel because i can mention you but this is you and i can show you your story about ants and what species you are keeping but this is another species this is not an ant definitely this is earwig earwig yeah very funny insect looks like cockroach cockroach is a little bit relative of earwig but this is separate order dermaptera dermaptera wings are a little bit visible you see here illiterous and small white wings of this insect and she is feeding on mulberry fruit mulberry fruit in summertime so earwig has the same behavior as cockroach i said about it because she's and he's actually males and females by eating practically everything practically everything we can find a little some drops of water some drops of some rubbish plants some dead insects sometimes we're eating plants sometimes making this little bit damages even in the garden so some people are not happy about them if people can find very near young plants in orchard because they can damage a little bit some young plantations that's why some people are afraid of them, especially people afraid of the forceps on the top of abdomen. Where people say they are poisonous. No, 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 earwigs are not poisonous. Earwigs are not stinging, not biting, but can take you just with these forceps like this, because they use these forceps for prey, for hunting. And there are some videos and some observations that they use it. We catch insect. Like caterpillar, we can catch moth and then can eat it with the mandibles, giving it to hands like sticks, like Chinese sticks, and eat it in, inside with the mandibles with, on the head. So here, this is a very funny earwig. 
So don't be afraid about the sticks on the top of the abdomen. They're not poisonous, not at all. What's about the next insect? One next insect was here in the same jar, and this is clicking beetles. Click beetles. Why he is named click beetle? Because he's making noise and his click can jump in. Click beetle is famous family Elateride, Elateride. Here he is sitting also on the mulberry fruit after feeding and just looking around, looking on the light of my lamp and he's trying to escape, trying to fly. But if he's just falling down on your palm or just on the table, he is just making turning, turning point, turning movement and by clicking by changing, by using his special click mechanism. He's clicking and turning around, and then just from the back, turning on his, on his legs and just crawling and running very quickly. That's why this is family click beetles. Ten Elateride is very famous about click behavior and making a little bit noise, noise of clicking. And you see here, the thorax with two horns in between thorax and elytra and he's trying to escape opening opening elytra showing just transparent wings and flying away flying away very easily many larvae living somewhere in uh, in the wood in the rotating wood especially under the bark of trees and so it's, and we are flying in evening time after the sunset so in the summer times, sometimes they are visible. So I collected them in the summertime near the rotten wood or just on maybe on the bark of tree. Very, very interesting and enjoyable for kids. And these are in other insects. These are beetles I found in a, in a mushroom inside mushroom or tree. And this is special family, Trosoglossidae, Trosoglossidae, difficult to pronounce, Trosoglossidae family. And this, this is a predaceous species, predaceous beetle, several beetles of Trosoglossidae family. This is the same one. And one is uh, who, who is escaped of a family darkling beetles, family Tenebrionidae, Tenebrionidae. They all live, they're living inside the mushroom. Darkling beetle was feeding on mushroom. On the body of mushroom and Trosoglossida were feeding on darkling beetles. This small one is darkling beetle. Yeah, two species with two different species. And there are some larvae as well inside the mushroom. So I show you next video the larva of this predaceous beetle. Larva of predaceous beetle has a predaceous mandibles and very flattened body. Without any protection, the major protection is ma big mandibles. Right side, this is a larva of Trosoglossida predaceous beetle. And left side, this is a larva of a Dermestida beetle, Dermestida beetle, which is living also under inside mushrooms sometimes, or living sometimes even in house and feeding on different dead insects. And these are larvae, I guess, of uh, flies, of diptera, diptera flies. Oh no, one small one is belonging to Tenebrionide, smaller, and this next small one coming. Just uh, Tenebrionide darkling beetles and big one. This is a larva of fly or diptera. So you see here, big mandibles of a, from the right side, big head. This is a predaceous beetle larva and left side. This is it, Dermestida and very hairy, hairy la larva. This hairy larva is protecting itself from another predators. But still, Trosoglossidae is very, very dangerous and very predaceous. So, very easy, can catch and eat all the other insects in, in the sample. And the small one coming, this is Tenebrionidae family, too small adults and smallest 
smallest larva this is tenebrionide darkling beetle because the top of the abdomen with special furca very tiny small forceps on the top of the body yeah and these beetles were just inside the sample of fungi and actually some larvae pupated in my sample and i got uh, then pupa and then adult of the same prostaglacidid beetle here again smallest these are tenebrionide big one white this is a fly diptera this is the same darkling beetle darkling beetle was another species not the smallest one but another species middle size yeah and this is one is white flower is hunting white flower is hunting on all another smallest beetles and here i show you again the larva of a dermestida beetle a little, a little leather beetle of a family dermestida how she's hairy hairy so if you can find this larva in your collection it means your collection of insects in your jar in your box is in a great danger because this larva is eating all dead insects and all insects in the collection box some small larvae or small beetles are penetrating through crevices or just small opening inside the box of collection insects so this is the greatest enemy of entomologist dermestid beetle larva and they're feeding on dead insects inside your collection so that's why all entomologists are really hating these larvae and these beetles because they're big pets of collections so we really hate them very much and it's need to to get rid of them needs to make some spraying with insecticide inside the collection of insects or just in a room with your collection as well and here a uh, very funny larvae with larvae of flies or diptera so they're visible with the larvae not beetles but flies why because these larvae they don't have head not visible head with eyes just only special mechanism for feeding like a like a stick on the head part of this larva which is used just for penetration inside of a food material and so these larvae were eating also mushroom and so we were just hatching from the mushroom and sitting in the in the small hole in a plastic hole so these are flies what another animals can be found inside mushrooms bracket bracket mushrooms for instance some other insects can be found for instance these are not insects these are not acari mites this is pseudoscorpion pseudoscorpion yes you see looks like a pseudo like a scorpion but this is pseudoscorpion pseudoscorpion is living sometimes even on old shells with dust because he is just feeding on all small invertebrates maybe some mites especially mites because this very tiny pseudoscorpion can eat even varomite in a beehive because the size of this Pseudoscorpion is just about uh, maybe two millimeters, two or three millimeters, especially with these forceps. He is not stinging, he is just predator, can take some the victim with his weapons, bring it to mouth parts and eat it. So you see here how he, this is his armament, his arms with special forceps for feeding. And this is a wider body abdomen and actually pseudoscorpion is definitely not insect but belonging to aranea close relative to spiders close relative to spiders but different one 
sometimes, as I said, were coming sometimes to beehive for searching for small and other invertebrates inside beehive. But here, this pseudoscorpion came inside bracket mushroom on tree, searching for some tiny larvae, as I showed before, larvae of flies, another insects, beetles, darkling beetles, click beetles, all larvae which are inhabiting the bracket mushrooms on a tree. And what about another insect who is nearby? This insect is called parasitoid, and I can show you nearby. This is a parasitoid of a family Braconide, Braconide family. Braconide. On the right side, this is a abdomen with very tiny stick on the top of abdomen, which is named ovipositor. Ovipositor size about maybe seven millimeters. And this is this parasitoid belonging to a called Hymenoptera, closer relative to wasps. So this is it's called the same. Braconid wasp, but only not stinging, but searching in for larvae of its host. Host is probably either the larva of beetle or probably the larva of small tiny moth who is feeding on the body of a bracket fungi, bracket mushroom on a tree. So that's why with this tiny insect, which is very fragile, is coming inside the crevices and holes in a bracket fungi, searching for larva of a beetle or caterpillar and penetrating the larva with its ovipositor and laying eggs inside. And the parasitoid larva is growing inside the caterpillar or beetle larva. So that's the, called, this insect called parasitoid. If you can see some parasitoids on the poster behind of me, for people who know that I'm presenting insects on poster. I have many post, many parasitoids here on this poster. So they are parasitoids from the super family Calcidu wasps, Calcidoidea, but previous one was a parasitoid of a Braconid wasps, also parasitoids from the older Hymenoptera, the same like a these was and parasitoids. And now I show you some another insects from the order Hymenoptera, but much bigger than this parasitoid. And who is this? You know them well, I showed them, and people enjoyed them very much. Go, go, go. No. And these are bumblebees. Bumblebees in, in August time. They're just entering the flower. Maybe not. Yes, in August time. Because this is a flower of malva, malva flower. Bee flowers, which are very common near, uh, near the in the gardens or near the houses. You know, urban areas in cities and villages. Malva, Malva has a, a lot of pollen, so there are some bumblebees who are coming and even some small tiny and this was one small ant was coming. I guess small ant was coming and escaping. And they were feeding on the, this flower, on the, on the nectar and on the pollen, collecting pollen. They are not so active because these are probably males and males are not so active or this was recorded in evening time. And finally, I show another Hymenopterous insect. And bumblebees are great pollinators, so all people enjoy them very much. Yes, and this is an insect which is a very famous predator. Yes, and these are not male. This is a female. Yeah, this is a female which I collected in summertime. Little bit tight specimen, so that's why not so active 
I gave her a little bit honey and it was sitting just on the edge of a box jar so not so active so a little bit ill trying to escape and falling down so why it is not male because you see very carefully on antenna antenna is not very long so 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 if you are not familiar it is male or not female be careful about, about wasps and hornets be very careful about them because this hornet was feeding and then became very active started to buzz buzz moving around the jar moving around and moving with with its wings you see buzzing 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 maybe trying to escape to the window for my for my jar and if he if she can attack you and sit on your skin maybe you can sting a little bit just by accident you see buzzing buzzing yeah this is named european hornet european hornet yes 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 and this european hornet is not very careful yes i'm entomologist i know how to take care of hornets. and i'm going to be very careful about it but if you are not familiar with our behavior of hornets be careful about them do not play with them this game like i did because it's a little bit dangerous dangerous only males of hornets are safe for experiments yes males are very safe because they don't have sting but this hornet this was has a pretty good sting a rather big one i will show you just on some videos sting of this hornet under the microscope so be careful about hornets if you want to take some videos or want to observe about them or if you want to feed them with honey because it's quite easy to feed wasps and another insects with honey but some insects can be stinging not in all the insects were poisonous no some insects and many insects are very careful and they are not poisonous but some insects can be poisonous or to be precise some insects some poisonous if they have some chemical reagents inside their body so if you can put it in your mouth and you can try to eat it you, you, you can be poisoned but some insects like stinging insects were venomous they're venomous they have a little bit venom in the special glands in venomous glands and with like bumblebees and like some bees are stinging so bees are stinging and bees are venomous because bees are sacrificing sacrificing their lives for the sake of a colony and that's why if you put honeybee on your farm press the bumblebee or press the honeybee bumblebee even very careful bumblebee or any honeybee will sting you because you pressed it so do not press on the body of a bumblebee do not press on the body of a bee because bees and bumblebees and also wasps are stinging and you should be very careful about stinging insects do not touch them with your abdomen or the back of body because on the top of a body there is a special place on the top of a body where there is hidden sting sting is hidden inside the abdomen and sting can stick you can can sting, sting can sting you and it's rather painful for small very tiny honeybee or for bigger bumblebee or for bigger or a small one wasp because some wasps are venomous and stinging painfully that's why be careful about bees wasps and bumblebees despite bumblebees are very very careful and we do not stink without any without reason Wasp can sting you because you are just near the nest. So do not go to the nest and do not put the stick inside the nest. But there are some rules of behavior to, for observations of wasp's nest and bumblebee's nest and honeybee's nest. And I will show you bumblebee nest and maybe some honeybee nest and also hornet nest in my next videos. So thank you for watching. 
Press like, write your comments, and ask your questions. And welcome to ask your questions, or welcome to send your questions on my email, if you have any. This is my email for communication. I show you on video. It's easier to show you rather than to read. But this is my email. So you can support also my channel through PayPal, sending your donations on PayPal account through my email, or you can visit my Patreon page. Link is given under this video. So for some couple cup of coffee or just one cup of coffee, it will be very supportive. And this gives me some enthusiasm and motivation to continue recording new videos and to create new stories for fun and some support from my viewers and my subscribers is really helpful. And don't forget to write your questions under the description of this video. Good luck. See you soon on my channel. Best greetings from Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. And don't forget, Ukraine is forever, despite all difficult circumstances. Ukraine is forever. Bye bye. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good luck. See you soon. Ukraine forever. Ukraine forever. Bye bye. See you soon on my channel. Your questions are welcome.